Thank you. One thing I have learned about this space is that though you would love to know what I've prepared, you really want to know what your question is. That's what you really want. That's why you're here for me to answer your questions. So I'm going to make sure I leave plenty of time for that. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. I'm loud. Thank you. Thank you for confirming that. So, ever have a good day? Yes. Yeah? Okay, good. So, first we're going to start with something simple. Uh, who are you, right? Anyway, like a lot of you do know me. Um, but I am the CEO of One Degree Marketing. Um, currently, I'm the Public Relations Manager for Co-Starters and Communities. Uh, that's a program here in Birmingham that I'm a part of. I am also a 24-hour member of Forge, <laughs> a veteran member of the Beehive, <laughs> and a Target regular. <laughs> Those bottom three are really important. That's my daily life. Target, Forge, probably some Beyonce. These are important things to know. Um, the next thing I want to make sure you know is who puts up with me. So it's not just me at One Degree. There are four people who work with me, Megan, Derek, Brittany, and Donald. They all support the things that I offer through One Degree. Um, and then there are also two other people, the interns. <laughs> they don't know that that's the picture I chose. So if you must share a picture, please. Share this one, because we've been talking about how we present ourselves on social media. And this was the best picture I could find of them together, um, where there weren't other things going on in the picture. <laughs> so, that's not a part of this, but please be careful how you present yourself on social media. This is cute, right? Okay, so let's jump right on into it. What, what is the big rock method, right? So we've come here to talk about, hey sister, We've come here to talk about content creation. So if you are here, I'm going to assume that for some reason or another, you have to create or generate content. That could be for a variety of reasons. You may not be a whole business with a team or whatever, but if you are a blogger, if you are a person who has a product, if you're thinking about it, then at some point you've decided, I need to create or generate some type of content, right? So that's why you're here. Anybody not here for that? Good, all right, I'm just making sure you weren't in the wrong classroom. All right, so basically, the big rock method essentially is just a process, right? So the hardest part, and tell me if, if I'm right or wrong on this, the hardest part about creating content is being able to have a repeatable process. Mm -hmm. Like, I did this one time, it was really good. I don't know how the stars align, but I'm not responsible for stars, so I can't make that happen again. So having a method to it, basically the point in this is to make sure you can do the same thing over and over and over again. And that's what makes it easy, is that you can do it over and over and over again, right? So in order, the consistency in creation is one thing, the consistency in how you put it out is a different thing. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Any questions on what this is? No? So before we get into, and this is gonna be very quick, it's not a whole marketing one-on-one -on -one thing, but before you get ready to create your content, there are two questions I want you to make sure you know the answer to. The first one is, what conversation do you want to own? Like for whatever you're putting out there in the universe, what is the actual topic or thing or issue or product or whatever, what is the space that you want to own as a brand, as a person, or as a business? First question I need you to have the answer to. Otherwise, the content you're creating has no real purpose, right? The second question I want you to answer is, what is the number one question my customers, my prospects have on their mind? Right, so two questions. What is the space I want to own? What is the conversation that I want to own? I want to be at the center of that. When they think about that, they think about me. And what are my, I'm gonna get out of the way because y'all are like, right? Um, and what are, what's the number one thing on my customer's mind, right? I need to know those two things in order to create engaging content for them to convert them in whatever way I'm trying to, I need to know these two things. Now, spoiler alert, they probably should be the same thing. <laughs> Just saying. I'm gonna move this back. I know Kelsey, I said I wanted it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Innovative, y'all. All right. Yeah, that's so cute. All right, so 
they should be about the same thing, right? So the thing that you want to own and the thing that they want, if they're not the same thing, either you're in the wrong business or you have the wrong customers. Does that make sense? If you're talking about jelly, but I really like peanut butter, we don't belong together, right? So make sure you understand, and, and it's important if they're not the same, that's still a good thing to know. The question is, which one are you going with, right? So if you're like, I want to own the mental health space, I want people they think about, I want them to think about me, but your number one question on your prospect's, prospect's mind is not about mental health. You know, it may be about something that's a side effect of mental health, but it may not be mental health itself. So the question is, which way are you going, and how do you marry these two things? Questions about that? All right. I do, I have a question. All right, let's pause right there. Okay, so if you're into um, multi-level marketing, and so you have product that you sell, and you're also recruiting business prospects, mm -hmm. how do you make that message unified Ask that one more time. So if you are in multi-level marketing mm -hmm. and you sell products right. and you want to recruit key members, right. how can you merge your message to? So you're saying how when you have two sets of customers, the people you want to bring on and the people you're actually selling to, mm -hmm. it's completely okay to have two separate standing things. Okay. They, don't, they can coexist, yes, and there are going to be places that you realize that they overlap, and that's fine. Okay. Um, but if they're two different things, they're two different things. The problem people run into with that is that they try to make them one when they're not. Gotcha. If it's two different conversations, if that means you need two different Facebook groups, you need two different Facebook groups. If your people buying products don't want to hear about you trying to make them be people to sell to, then separate the spaces and just treat them like two different things. Does that make sense to everyone? Good. Any other questions? Listen. That is not rhetorical. Y'all better throw it out there while it's fresh on your mind. Because if you're like me and you're a little old, you're not going to remember a question ahead of time. All right, so the Big Rock method essentially at its core is repurposing content. Like, let's just call it what it is. It's repurposing content. And the whole purpose of repurposing content is so that you can create cohesiveness across all the channels. Right? So if you have a blog and you have a store and you have all of these spaces that you're operating in, you need to make sure that those spaces operate well together, right? The other reason is that you want to be consistent. So the number one question I get asked about social media is how often should I post? And if you've ever been to anything I have ever done, you know my answer is as often as you can maintain. Because it matters more that you do it at the same time regularly than it does that you do it five times in one day like somebody told you to. If you are not a five times in one day person, that is not for you, and your audience will not appreciate your up and down. You're gonna seem inconsistent, and they can't trust you. And if they can't trust you, they're not gonna give you money. Y'all see how they got the money real quick? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, just making sure you know that all of this leads to how it can affect if you're selling the dollars. And if you're asking them for something else, an email address, something that's not dollars, it still creates an untrustworthy space. Sometimes she posts all the time. Sometimes she, she's, ghosting me on Facebook, what is happening, right? So be careful of that. Um, and also, that repeatable process that we talked about. So repurposing content, this method is just about that. These, these are our core reasons that we repurpose. All right, who likes turkey? Don't nobody like turkey? Thank you, sir. All these girls trying to be cute. <laughs> Come on now, I, I think if I show up at Thanksgiving at your grandmother's house, I don't know who likes turkey. All right, so, so we want to talk about Big Rock. So though it's called the Big Rock Method, I want to present it to you as turkey. Stay with me. Stay with me here, okay? So we want to treat our content like leftovers as a means to meet the five, to, to feed the 5,000. Everybody know the story from scripture about feeding the 5,000 with the two fish and five loaves? We want to talk about how God was the original Big Rock method <laughs> um, repurposing of content, okay? So we basically want to figure out how we take this big bird and spread it out the pieces across multiple channels as a means to create that cohesiveness and consistency and building a repeatable process. Does that make sense? Good. Awesome. So, Put another pin here and talk about something that's important. 
there's two types of content you're going to create from this process. And it's important that you understand where they fall in what most salespeople would call your funnel, right? There's a sales funnel. If that word makes you feel dirty and cheap, that's fine. But there's two types of content that really matter. There's gated and there's non-gated. So let's talk about the difference. Gated, non-gated content, this is our non-gated stuff. It's stuff anybody can get to. I can happen upon it. I just passed by it, somebody reposted it, somebody shared it, I signed up for it, free whatever. It's not gated. I don't get anything from you from being in that space. If I post a blog, I don't get to control who goes to one degree mmm.com slash blog and reads it. It's not gated. I have no, not that, not that I don't have any control over it, but it's free for all, right? So when you're creating your content, and you think about this in the repurposing state, I have these pieces, I wanna spread them out, some of them are just to have stuff out there. The purpose in this is to kind of become your own, almost like your own, thank you Jessica, <laughs> your own media company. You're putting your own pings out there in the world. It's not gated, right? Anybody can have it. That's good stuff, however, you have your gated stuff. This is where you start asking for stuff. You might want their email address. You might want money from them. So the difference, and let me break this down in, in an example. So you have a blog, for instance, right? Non-gated, cool, I read the blog, that was fun. But somewhere at the bottom of that blog, this is why call to actions matter. Somewhere at the bottom of that blog, I might have said, but if you want this free downloadable, give me your email address. That's gated, you don't get it unless you give me an email address. You need a password, that's gonna be money, that's gonna be something that you have to give me in exchange. And so on a larger level, you get an email list, and it's like, hey, if you want the full nine volumes of me talking about content creation for the low, low price of $19.99, give me money. It's gated, right? So when you think about the content that you're creating, you also have to decide who gets access to it and what kind of gate you're building around it and how does that get you to the dollars. Questions? All right. <laughs> Pretty much for all the like pretty much for all of the different formats that you're using, figuring out. Yes, that's for, that's for everything. So podcasts, like I know you do podcasts, non-gated, right? Nobody, they can just go and listen. You wanna just make sure for all of the channels you have, you decide, because you can have, you can't do this on podcasts, but if you were on Instagram, of course you may use that space as a non-gated space to lead to a gated space. So you're just weaving them together, but on every channel that you use, yes, both of these things will come up. Right. So then even on figuring out your posts for, say, Instagram, mm -hmm. some can be gated, some not. Some can be just out there, information, and some can be more directed to a specific. Absolutely. Like, so, of course, with Instagram, it's, I guess, unless you make it a private account, it's non-gated anyway. Where you're asking them to go or what you're offering them is the part that's gated or not gated. Right. It's more the, the next step. Yeah. Any other questions? And speaking of gated information, if you're requesting funds for exchange of information but do you use the cash app is, is that i've been debating whether to use it or not so i'm all you know that's actually a good question um and i, I won't stay on it too long it, it, honestly it depends on what you want to do so there are business cash app accounts and though people often see cash apps, oh you know they aren't professional they didn't send me an invoice or they didn't send me a paypal or whatever there are business i have a business cash app i have a business paypal also have personal cash app, and now if it goes to dollar sign Mrs. Jackie Jones, that's going to my dollars. <laughs> However, if I pay it through or I do it through my business, it takes a fee just like PayPal, just like invoicing. So it's about how you handle business. If you have a very relaxed business, and I mean this in all aspects, if you're a relaxed person, you have a relaxed business, you're like, yep, just cash out, I mean, that's your business to do. Do it the way you want to do it, period. If you want to be official, make sure you can do it repeatedly. If you can't do it repeatedly, don't do it. If it's easier for your customers that way, then fine. Do what works for you. So, so the difference in how that you move on between the regular cash app and the business cash app is that you get an invoice and a receipt? No, the difference is that, like with PayPal transactions, you're not gonna get all the money because they're gonna take a fee from it. So by the time it gets to your account, you have less dollars because you had to pay a transaction fee because they know you, you they're paying for something. So you're gonna get treated like a business as opposed to a person who's just getting the whole $20 for gas.
you're only gonna get like 1976. Yes. Can I say I just personally don't trust cash out? And that's the thing you yes. have to find out from your customers. Yeah. Trust cash and that's something like I say, it's your business to handle. If your customers feel okay with that, hey, go for it. If they feel that way, don't. Like that's but on the business side, on the back end, it all comes through the same way. All right, so back to turkey. Makes you hungry, yeah, purple turkey. All right, so of course you wanna think about what channels you're using, and we kinda of just talked about that just a little bit. Um, if there are other channels that are not here, right? So most people will have these types of things, blogs, infographics, webinars, video. Then you have your social media channels, that type of thing. All of those are going to be so, and of course that could, this could be Instagram, and this could be Facebook, like you, everything is a channel that you need to decide what channels you're using. Okay, so let's take an example. Uh, let's play a game. Give me, make me up a business. What, what am I in the business of? Come on, throw some out there. It can be fun. <laughs> selling turkeys. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, I am in the business of selling turkeys. That was genius. All right, so. In, in using the Big Rock method, this is what I'm going to do. I'm gonna decide, okay, April starts the second quarter. I'm gonna think of it in a quarterly way. You can do this quarterly, monthly, whatever works for you. Quarterly works for me because once I get in the weeds, I can't pull back and do, do it again, right? So I'm gonna look at, this is my quarterly turkey selling business, right? So I'm going to decide what my theme for the quarter is. I'm gonna go ahead and decide, you know what? This is a slow time for turkey in the second quarter. It's not even Thanksgiving. <clears throat> People don't even think about turkey when it's not Thanksgiving. When was the last time you had turkey? Thanksgiving. <laughs> but what I want to do is, is get you to buy turkey, but what this process does is get the leftovers to making turkey sandwiches and turkey pies and turkey roll-ups and turkey cake. I don't know what you make with turkey, but making all the things out of, the, out of the same meat, right? Because of course we have leftovers. Big Rock is about how do you use your leftovers, that same stuff, to make other things. You're forcing yourself to be creative while you have to be efficient. Does that make sense? So before it goes bad, you have to use it as much as possible, but you don't want to fix just another turkey and dressing plate. It's the same thing with your content. Yes, it's the same information. So I'm gonna talk to you, let's say second quarter, I'm gonna educate you on the benefits of eating turkey. That's what I've decided, right? So I sit down for a weekend, let's say, and I decide to just write out all the stuff, all the education, all the tips, take some pictures, do all the stuff, right? I got all this junk, for lack of a better word. Got all this junk, right? Now I'm going to go through and decide, you know what, this will make a good presentation. <coughs> ah, this will make a good blog. I can take from that blog and put one tip and put it on Instagram. Same information, over and over. It's still turkey but I'm giving you different ways to consume them. Everybody understand that? That sounds really simple, but if you don't think about it from the beginning, it's hard to do in the middle of the food being on the table, right? So I'm gonna decide now, just dump it all. So first step in this, and I didn't make a slide for this, sorry. First step in this is you need to dump all the stuff up front in order for you, because you have to have a bird to cut up. So do not skip straight to what these channels and pieces of, of the turkey is you need to first cook the bird, like get, get it full, get it done, <coughs> right? Get the bird done, and then you can cut it up. So the first thing you have to do is make that decision. Is it in the conversation I wanna own? Is it what's on their mind? What am I gonna focus on in whatever time frame? And once I've done that, I'm going to create a bird. I'm gonna get all that information out. How do I wanna talk about it? How do I wanna frame it? Am I having a sale? Am I having a promotion? What does that look like? Not trying to put it on a date, not trying to put it on, just get it out, just cook the bird, right? Go ahead. So is that bird all your one order? Is that one turkey? Pickle? That's one turkey for one the purpose turkey. of you creating content. For the now, nobody gets the whole bird, notice. Nobody gets the whole bird. It's your bird, it's your turkey. You're going to give it to people how you want them to have it. But for the purpose of creating your content, you need to cook the bird. Decide what it's gonna be, write, write out some stuff. It may be one blog, it may be five. You know, and then you cut it up later and say, you know what, that's a series. But I didn't realize that while I was writing it. Or it might be a photo shoot that you're like, okay, I'm gonna have this photo shoot. Mm, I should sit at this park bench. Oh, let me change my shirt. 
Now you're taking a bird of a photo shoot and cutting up how you plan to give it on different spaces. You're getting efficiency out of leftovers. That makes sense. Yeah? See, he is not. <laughs> so that's essentially, and that's really the whole process. Now, I say it's very simple because it sounds simple in theory. However, when you decide the time frame that you want to do, you have to realize if you want to do this for a quarter, you're going to need like a week to do that. You're going to need some time to sit down and just write out all the stuff. And then you got to go through and pick out what can just be a one-liner, what can be an email, what can be, what space, is this gated? Is this really, really detailed and I don't want to give this away? Or is this product really, really special and I only want to give it to people who signed up for my email list? Like, what do I want to do with it? But first, you have to put the bird. All right. That's important to understand too. Yes. You can be frustrated thinking you can do it in an afternoon. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. Now, if you're a person who wants to try this week to week, bless you. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So, so you have your channels, right? Here we are. A couple of things that I want you to kind of just know, and I'm, I know you probably keep moving because of me. I'm sorry. Um, no. A couple of things I want you to know. If you're not, if you don't have an email list, that's fine. A lot of people would argue email is not a good idea. I don't think that's true, and I'll tell you why. Because email is one of the few spaces in digital world that you still get to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. If I go to Facebook, I'm gonna see all the stuff. You don't get to decide what I see on Facebook. But when I click to open that email, you get to choose what I see. You understand the value of that? Like there's a great value in controlling a space. So that's why you should not put all your eggs in the social media basket. But whatever content you're going to put out there, you definitely want to treat everything like a launch. Like everything is like a product. It's a big deal. If you have a new way of doing it, a new product, a new blog, it is a big deal because you told them it's a big deal. And if you can tell that to the people who have already committed to give you one-on-one -on -one time in the first 30 days, it is more likely that they're going to engage with that in some way and push on along in the process if you can go ahead and give them that piece of turkey right then, right? <coughs> that same turkey could then turn into a blog. So let's say it starts as an email only. You only told these people. But then you decide to take that same thing that you gave them exclusively and give it to everybody else on a blog. So now you have a recurring, that's what evergreen means. You can always come back to it, it never goes bad. Right? You have a recurring thing that you can do over and over again and refer to over and over again. Something happens in the media, relates to it, boom, put that old blog back up there. Put that old content back up there, that top 10 list, best ways to, whatever it was that you put up there. Now you can go back to it and now you get the opportunity to capture new people and remind old people. Right? So then we get further into the social media stuff. Now social media is a means of support. It is not a means directly to revenue. Do not let people lie to you, okay? People are like, I make $100,000 off Instagram. No, you don't. You make it off the link in the Instagram bio that goes somewhere else, right? It's not happening on Instagram. Instagram is not paying you money. Though somebody else may be paying you money, it's not happening in Instagram. Your social media should support all this stuff that you sliced off and keep people going, keep them coming back to the table, right? All that makes sense? Yeah. Wait, what are the 30, 60 off? So 30 days later you turn it into a blog? Within the 30 days. Okay. So, or just when you give it to them. That's just a, it could be different. It'd be 15, 30, then forever. Okay, and um, then you rotate that blog out. You just keep it, like I have a stuff I write on LinkedIn. Do I just keep those up there? Do I take them down and put them back? Or try no, them you just make sure you refer to them often. Okay. So, so let's say you post something on LinkedIn, but you never posted it to Facebook. Well, they all go. Yeah, sometimes everybody's not connected that well. You're really good at your stuff. Everybody's not that good at it. But let's say that you're your clients. Right. <laughs> but let's say that you decide some stuff is for my LinkedIn people, some stuff is for my Facebook people. Yeah. Like, though they both could use it, I'm going to separate who gets what. Mm -hmm. And then 30 days later, I'm going to switch it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give them this stuff and then this stuff. Because so don't do that automatic share. No, don't do that automatic uh, share. Don't talk. do that automatic share. I'm going to create a slide for that. Do not automatic share anything. So you know, you know when you put something on Instagram and you're like auto share to Facebook, just send it on. Do not do that. Do not do that.
do that. Anybody want to know why? Yeah. yeah. Of course you do, because you probably thought I was sharing out here. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I don't want you to do that is because when you're on, and I'm going to ask you so that you can tell me, kind of. When you're on Facebook and you see a picture, great picture, the caption, straight, and it says, click the link in my bio. What bio am I clicking on in Facebook? There is no link in bio. Right. Then you have hashtags. What am I going to do with that on Facebook? Right. Though hashtags work on Facebook, people don't use them. So they have no purpose there. So you have to make sure that in each space, if you're going to, if you say my target audience is on LinkedIn and my target audience is on Instagram as well, they do not act the same way in both spaces. And I know you all know this because you're the same way. My LinkedIn is super professional. My Instagram has me standing in a swimsuit in the ocean. <laughs> I'm the same person and I want the same information, but you're gonna have to give it to me differently in order for me to even pay attention to it on Instagram. I'm scrolling for cute shoes and all kinds of stuff, right? Okay, so for my blog Instagram, I have that in my actual blog. I have it auto shared to that Instagram. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, I still keep the content uniform because that's what that Instagram is for that content that is based off of that blog. So I still shouldn't auto share in that aspect? You know, I always want you to always think about your, the person who's going to consume it first. How would you want to frame it for them? Auto share takes your ability to customize a conversation. Even if it's the same stuff you want to say, trust me, there is something, even the smallest thing different about how you're going to type it when you get into Instagram how you're going to put it on Twitter. Even if it's just the, the space, the restrictions you have on that platform are going to force your brain to do something a little different. Because you gotta be punchier, you know, quicker on Twitter, right? You gotta just get to it and say it. You don't have Facebook space to do that. And so your mind is naturally going to be like, put it up front. Like, let me, you don't get that opportunity when you auto share, even if they're related. But that again comes back to knowing up front what the bird is, and deciding this is why you have to decide how you want to slice it off. You may be saying the exact same thing over and over again, but if you say it differently, they will like it and share it and engage with it in that space if it's, been for, if it's for that space. Yes? Other questions? I heard something. Okay. All right. Okay, but why though? Right? Why, why go through all of this? Why, why does this matter, especially in, my, in the social media space, to think about this in the big rock way? Why does that even matter? Right? So this is about, and we're going to go back to the rocks, right? This is about how you want to fill your container. So if your social media, for instance, is a jar, a really big jar, let's make it a vase. It's a vase, right? It's a big vase. It stands on the floor. It's open like this. And you want to fill that up. You want to fill it up with big rocks and sand. If you put the sand in first, you're not fitting big rocks. So if your intent and purpose, that conversation you want to own is the most important thing that you're trying to make sure is clear in every space, but you also want to show your personality and take selfies, which all of that is fine, but if you fill your container with the noise first, you don't have enough room for the things that actually matter. So what you do is, you put your big rocks in there, make sure you're getting the stuff in there that matters, and then you sprinkle stuff around you and fill your container just the same. Except you got everything that matters in first. Does that make sense? So I don't want you now, if you have ever been on any live I've done, you can say, don't walk around with your hand out. Nobody wants to go on your Instagram, Facebook, or otherwise, where you're like, give me money, give me money, give me money. That's not fun. We don't like it. Stop doing it if you're doing it. I'm not looking at anyone in particular because I don't know if you are, but stop, okay? <laughs> don't do that. Yes, you want to have other things going on, but you need to make sure you've decided what the big rocks are first, and then sprinkle all that fun stuff in, behind the scenes stuff, and oh, I have kids too, and all the other places you feel like you relate to your audience, but you have to decide how you're going to fill your container, or your container is going to fill up, and then you're going to be missing space. You feel like you have no room to do everything you want to do. Yeah? Yes, ma'am. Does link and bio equal give me money? No, link in bio is a means to push people through a funnel. Okay, you can say that just without giving money. Like yeah, asking. no, calls to action are not the same as give me money, give me okay. money. Now, if every time you tell me to click on the link in bio, you're asking me for money, then yeah, that might be a problem. But if you're just leading them there. Yeah, if I'm like, hey, I have a new blog, link in bio, that's not the same as, hey, I have a new product, go buy it, give me okay. money. Like, you click here, just and suddenly my wallet starts to get anxiety, that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? 
Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I want you to treat every slice like a big deal, like every slice of your turkey. We're back to turkey. Stay with me, people. We're back to turkey. You want to treat every slice like a big deal. Like I said, everything is a launch. Everything is important. Everything is a big deal, and you make it a big deal in these spaces by playing it up all the way. Now, if that makes you feel weird, now strange, strangely enough, and I know I go through this, we put things out into the world, and then we kind of hide our hand, like I don't want to self-promote, that feels weird, I don't want to always be talking about I'm great, I'm wonderful. I'm the worst at that, there's some people who can testify, I'm not gonna look at that table, um, that would call me out on that. <laughs> so, but it's really, really important that you make them know everything is a big deal. Get them excited. If they're not excited, you're noise. Get them excited every single time. So in this process, when you start slicing it off, think about how you're gonna make every slice look like Thanksgiving. Yes, it's between bread this time, but it's a Thanksgiving sandwich. It's not just a turkey sandwich. Here's what I don't want you to do. Do not wait until your turkey is too old to be leftovers, okay? So you had a great idea. You made this great, you know, you have this great idea about how it's all gonna go, but then three months later, you're just getting to getting the actual content out there. Nobody wants three month old turkey. It's nasty, so I hear, I haven't had it. Um, but it sounds nasty, right? Don't wait too long. So yes, you may be using it forever after you put it out, but go ahead and strike it. Like, I got a blog or I have a product, I put it out, boom, tell my email list. Boom, put it out there on my site. Whatever you're gonna do, do it. You can come back later and keep it going in evergreen kind of fashion, but get it out there, treat it like a big deal, do it up front. So don't wait until it's too old. Another thing I don't want you to do is feel like you're giving your audience too much of the same thing. That becomes the biggest issue with this method. People feel like, but didn't I just say that? Didn't I just say that? Yes, you did. I'll answer that for you. You sure did. You just said the exact same thing. <laughs> you did. It's true. Guess what? They don't care. They don't care that you just said it because what you might have done is taken a three page long blog and said the three tips on one Instagram post. Now I got the point and I get to decide if I want to go over here and get the details. But you just said the same thing. It's okay, don't feel like if they, if they like turkey, they're going to eat the leftovers. It's fine. And if they keep engaging with that, then you know you're in the right space. Question? Yes. When it comes to Instagram posts versus Facebook versus blog, should you be mindful of the length of your content? So a blog obviously can be probably the longest of them all. But it can be. But when it comes to Instagram, I've been told to keep it really short and simple, but concentrate on hashtags, and then Facebook is another avenue for storytelling. So, let's see how we put this. Facebook, to me, is like the blog page on your website, but on social media. Right. You have a little bit of room to do kind of what you want, but you have to remember that on social media, again, you are in the worst traffic ever. Like. If you were stuck in the worst traffic jam ever, maybe on 280 right now, worst traffic jam ever, that's what Facebook is like. Any social media space is like that. People are doing this. They rarely, you have to say something real good before they read more, or those dots show up, or I'm not clicking. So if you're going to go long form, you need to make sure you hit hard right there at the top. And that's, the, that's true in any space, because on Instagram, people get lengthy. And that's fine, that's become a thing now that they can. It's completely fine, but if you don't capture in that first couple, whatever the preview point is, then you likely have lost them anyway. It doesn't matter if it's one line after that or 100. They didn't think it was important enough to stop and click it anyway. So I would focus more on how I'm capturing people's attention than the length, because if you get their attention, if they care enough, they'll stick with it, right? So. I would play with that and whatever works for you works for you. I also am just a fan of shorter captions because I think no, I'm ADD like that. And most people are, most consumers are extremely. That's it. <laughs> That's all to it. 
Um, I want to make sure I have some room for. Oh, that's a pretty good time. Yeah. Um, I want to make sure I have some room for questions. Any other questions? Now, of course, we're talking about content creation. A lot of this sounds service based, and I know my sister has an actual product. If you serve, if you sell an actual product and you have a question, ask, please ask it because a lot of this feels like words and blogs and not necessarily products and smoothies. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. sure I fully understand. So currently you all are trying, I want to make sure I understand what the goal was to yeah. increase the businesses that are working with you Correct. and increase the consumers who are working with you. Correct. And the question is, is it possible to have the consume, use the consumers as a means to attract the businesses? Yes. Like, Can they be the same space? There we go. <laughs> Speaking my language now. Boom. All right. <laughs> they, they can be the same turkey. However, what I would strongly recommend first is that you cook two birds and then you go through when you start slicing, see what looks just alike. Like figure out what comes out the same way and you merge those things. And that's kind of what I was saying to her. If there are things that are similar and they overlap, let them overlap. Don't think just because you cut it from a different bird, it can't go on the same plate, it can. But you should first identify, like, because you want a very pure space of what you're creating and content for each conversation. Because those conversations are different, though they will overlap, but you want to make sure that you aren't like, okay, what'd you say now? What? Okay, wait, wait, what? Okay. You don't want to do that. You want to say, I'm talking to you, and I'm talking to you, but wait, y'all are saying the same thing. Let's just make this a group conversation. So make sure you go ahead and purely do the stuff, cook two birds, when you fix plates, decide if either of these things can go on the same plate. This turkey thing is good. <laughs> Don't steal the turkey thing, y'all. Don't steal it. I might steal it. Yes? Um, of the so social media that you have listed here, is there one platform better than, than the other in your opinion? Um, no, not no one is better than the other for anyone. It's about where your your audience is. Um, it's going to be most effective where the people that you know you deal with want to be. Now, if you go to Twitter, you know I don't see very many tweets for me. Just gonna be honest, I go up and down with that. I'm okay with that completely. I don't prefer people on Twitter. It's just there. It's not my space. Now I have to be on Twitter because of client stuff. And I'll repost their stuff sometimes and my blog stuff and that kind of thing. But me talk, Twitter is like a high school lunchroom cafeteria. You have to be there for a while to talk and respond. And I can't, I can't do that. That's not who I am as a person. But for some businesses, that conversation matters. Twitter chats are a thing. You know, people spend hours on Twitter interacting with each other and growing their businesses and growing their followings. If that's the space you're in, it works for you. If you are a product, especially if you're product based and you're on Instagram where it's picture based, you should be dominating Instagram in your strategy because all you have is stuff to show them. You don't, you might phone here. This is what I need you to know phone. Phone with smoothie. Smoothie people like phones. <laughs> like you have, a, you have a space or platform for the type of thing that you're offering. So if it's specific to your area, if your customer is there, and you all have a good organic conversation there, it's good for you. Now, and you're a service-based business, which, yeah. said, which, which platform works better for you? Honestly, it's interesting that you didn't put LinkedIn up here. I did not. Um, that's a good call out, I'm sure. Um, I did not, and that's, okay, so here's the thing with me. Don't be like, well, you better do it. First, that's the first thing. Um, LinkedIn, to me, though, has become more social. It's still not as social as it should be for the purpose of content creation. If you want to educate people, LinkedIn is your space. Like, and so for me, it should be my space, but I don't have that kind of time right now. 
but it should be my space. But as far as growing an audience in general, and ads and stuff like that, LinkedIn is one of the most specific, like you gotta know who you're after, be willing to go through, see who works where, who goes, whatever, send those, those messages inbox. Like that's really more of a sales hustle to me <clears throat> than anything. It has to be really, really specific in LinkedIn. And so I don't spend time focusing on my strategy in LinkedIn right now. But again, that's because I'm a visual, I'm a creative agency for the most part. There's, I attract more people with me standing in the ocean in a bathing suit, believe it or not, for marketing services than I do with any of the educational stuff I do. <clears throat> it's weird, but true. But they're attracted to me as a fun personality. They, they decide that my personality is how I'm gonna treat them in business, and that's 100% true. And I make sure that's shown in the way that I present one degree. That's why Instagram is really good for us, because we're gonna be silly on there, we're gonna be whatever. That gives me space, I can't take that to LinkedIn. Be like, <clears throat> why are you over here? <laughs> 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 Any, other? Yeah. Any other questions? Listen, I don't invoice up until one o'clock. <laughs> 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 one on one, we're gonna have. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Yes, ma'am. But no, I mean, if I try to take everything you said uh, and figure out, like, what is my main communication? So if I say it's the podcast, mm -hmm. so I would plan the podcast as my turkey over. Mm -hmm. Your podcast is a channel. It's not your turkey. So. So the theme of the podcast is my turkey. Okay. The theme of the time frame. So, so let's say that, and I just happen to really know your business really well. Um, so let's just say. In your case, you're going to decide, we're talking about April, right? Because who wants to think about March, just like tomorrow. So April, right, we're thinking about April. In April, we want to focus on the benefits of spirituality or just, you know, meditation, we'll go meditation, meditation in the workplace, right? How that helps. That's gonna be our main thing. So I'm gonna take two or three days and I'm gonna sit down and just kind of get that out of my head. Am I gonna think about spaces you can do it, problems people have, you know, horrible things their, their co-workers say when they have crystals and stuff burning all in the office. Like, what do I just dump it all out? That's how you cook your bird. All that stuff that you just dumped out, that's, that's the bird. That's you seasoning it and saying, hey, okay, I'm gonna write this out really pretty or I'm gonna write this out really whatever. That's the bird. Slice, podcast. This conversation right here from the bird, all this stuff I dumped, this will make a great podcast. And then say, oh no, but this this I need to like put some visuals in and stuff. This is a good blog. Or this is gonna lead to some sales and some stuff. Maybe I should put this on Instagram because it's really more visual and I have an actual product for that. This is Instagram. So you're gonna take all the stuff that you wanna dump for the time frame, dump it out with no purpose of don't do not do this with a calendar in front of you, please. Mm -hmm. Just get it out of your head. Your calendar is your brick wall. If you say, say April, and then just get rid of the calendar, mm -hmm. and then just dump the stuff, pull the calendar back, and say, okay, I can get three blobs out of this. Where do I want them to go? That's when you get to that. But while you're cooking the bird, no timers, okay? This is like your grandmother used to cook. You just, it's just a pinch of love and a splash of happiness. And then just let it, let it cook until the street lights come on. That's, that's it, that's the recipe. In some kind of way, the bird is amazing, right? Okay? That was great, that was very cool. So would you suggest for someone that's a week to week and trying to always catch up, just start with like a one month time frame, get that, and then you can move into like a quarter? That's a good question, because I'm that person often. Um, but for other people, they don't know. <laughs> they don't know that person. Um, I would recommend shooting out. So you can pick whatever time frame you want, but how my example was April and not March. Don't do March. I'm gonna say that to this room. Don't do March. Hey people, don't do March, okay? You don't have enough time between now and Friday, because if you cook the bird, you have to have cooked it, dumped all the stuff, seasoned it real good, sliced it up, created the content, got the pictures, got the copy, decided where it's gonna go, what day it's gonna go on, so that when it's time for March, you just know, and at least if you're behind, you can say, I know what I'm supposed to do, right? So a good way to start this is just go ahead. Skip some time, okay. skip some time, and that might be, month of April might be second quarter for you, April, March, April, May, not March, April, May, June. Mm -hmm. No, you can let it, let it simmer, girl, let it simmer. Yes, I see you. It's better than struggling week to week. Perfect. 
different notebooks. I am yeah. missing the opportunity to put out a cookbook right now. All right. <laughs> How to cook your content. Um, so I, I would, my answer to that and how long you let it cook is that if your ingredients are good, there's not really a time to let it cook too long. Okay. Because I thought, but then you stopped me. I thought that I could cook my, my Friday, like real soft. No, no, no. I, and, I, and, I, and I know you messed up. No, no, no. <laughs> Nobody does March. That's the rule. Okay. If you try to leave here and do March, you're going to fall down the steps. Okay. <laughs> that okay, so what I would. And I'm going to answer the rest of your question. My, okay, so I have two kids that can be put together, right? Mm -hmm. So makeup and photography. Mm -hmm. Prom season is coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to get um, my audience, like, I'm doing like a promotional for prom season. I'm doing makeup and a few shots for the prom day. Yeah. So don't take my ideas. I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> But um, so my target is more of April, so I would need to get it out by mid-March. I. So is that, so still no March? Okay. She's saying because it's prom season, should she do March? And my answer was no. So, and I and I know that that feels like missed opportunity. However. I mean, that's still graduation, but. Right, but still, and I'm not saying you can't pursue customers. I'm saying don't try to implement this method for okay. March. Okay. Because this is going to require that you decide before Friday, Chloe that all the things that will happen in the month of March, and that's heavy lifting if you come today lost. Like if you're like, I don't really know how this is gonna happen. This is as great as I feel like I am some days. This is not enough to heavy lift a whole month of content. Now, if you want to try it, by all means go for it and then just you know hit me up on the DM and let me know how that goes for you. And I'm not saying that you will fail. You may decide, I have three days off, the kids are gone, whatever, I have time, I have 24 hours, I'm gonna use 22 of them to work on this. Do it, do not let it stop you. I don't, it's not my purpose to discourage you. I'm saying that if you know there are things you wanna do, focus on that sale and promotion. Get that done, cook your turkey during the month of March so that in April, when you already have customers and you already have appointments and stuff going, you can say, by that time you get to say limited spots available. You don't get to say that in March. And so you have time to cook up reasons why it's important to do that. Things that people have told you that they really appreciate. I know you have people years before, like you have time to gather all that. Take some time, cook your turkey, Chloe. Okay, and again, if you've already been doing this for a while and you feel like you've just been sitting on stuff, it's fine. Let's assume that our purple turkey uses never expiring ingredients. If the ingredients are good, people will consume it. The time you cook it is about the time that you're trying to get it launched. The cooking time is not about your idea. It's more about once I get all this dumped out, how much time am I to put a date on it? March 1st through 31st? 30, 31, right? Yeah. 31st, this is the time I'm going to cook my turkey because April 1st, I'm, I'm slicing and I'm serving plates everywhere. Come on, Instagram, Facebook, here you go. Everybody. So give yourself time to make it work. In entrepreneurship, Anybody who's an entrepreneur, especially full-time, knows this. If you force it, you are hustling backwards. Mm -hmm. Give yourself time to develop it the way that you want, even if that means you miss a couple appointments. That's fine. But in April, you leave nothing to chance, right? Yes, ma'am. Just to add, because I cook so like raw, <laughs> it is better to, to cook your turkey for April than to rush your March turkey and serve it undercooked. Because you may get Come a on. lot of people that are not coming back. And so if I get a half cooked, yeah, I know what you're about to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I get a half cooked turkey from you. If so, you got this great thing and you put it out there, and I was like, yes. And then you overbook because you didn't time it out well. Yeah. Or you do my face, and well, these pictures I didn't get my pictures back. And um, yeah, you did my pictures and you did my face, and I was cute, but ain't nobody see it. So she was kind of dragged away. I'm not coming to you for graduation. I'm yeah. not coming for you to do for anything else. So take the time to cook the turkey. And she does cook in real life. And that is so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm.